And welcome to the ETF Edge portion of Halftime Report. I'm Bob Pisani. Inflation and Bitcoin remain the two big stories in the ETF world. Let's dive into both of them with Jim Davalos. He's the portfolio manager at Horizon Kinetics. He manages the Inflation Beneficiaries ETF, symbol INFL, and Anna Paglia. She's the global head of ETFs and index strategy for Invesco. Anna, on Friday, the SEC rejected a pure play Bitcoin ETF. Now, there's two Bitcoin futures ETFs currently trading, but a short while ago, Invesco decided to withdraw its Bitcoin futures application. Why did you make that decision, and what do you think of the chances for a pure play Bitcoin ETF in 2022? Well, Bob, the decision to put the application falls into the camp of uh, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Uh, as you may appreciate, uh, the market for the Bitcoin futures is in contango, which means uh, it's really expensive uh, to roll futures from one month to the next. And that cost uh, would erode the performance. So we do believe that ETFs uh, should be designed to give access to clients uh, to an underlying asset class. But we also believe that ETFs should provide returns that are aligned to the underlying portfolio or the index that you are tracking. In this case, uh, we studied the market, we studied the portfolio, we looked at the constraints that the SEC was imposing on that portfolio itself, and we just concluded that it was not really aligned with our ETF strategy or philosophy, and it was not really aligned with uh, uh, products that clients are expecting from us, from Invesco. As far as the pure play ETF, I hope that uh, 2022 is going to be the year for that product. I wasn't surprised that the SEC uh, rejected the application last week. Um, issues like uh, price manipulation and fraud have not been addressed yet. I do think that some more regulation uh, is uh, something that the SEC is expecting uh, before approving the next application. But I'm counting on 2022 right. to be here for a pure play. Yeah. All right. Uh, Jim, since launching the Inflation Beneficiaries ETF in January, your assets have gone straight up. You're approaching a billion dollars in assets under management. Now, you own land, you know, energy. And you own exchanges like the Deutsche Börse and the Australian Stock Exchange. I get the land and energy, but why are stock exchange considered inflation hedges? Thanks, Bob. And I think one of the main reasons for our success, both in terms of performance and assets, has been that we focus on good businesses that are capital light. So you don't need to invest in bad, cyclical, capital-intensive businesses to benefit from inflation. And exchanges are really the epitome of the great businesses that benefit from inflation. So they trade every derivatives ranging equity markets, currencies, commodities, uh, interest rates. Imagine the volatility and volume that's going to flow through these businesses if CPI keeps running three, four, five, six plus, the 10 year breaks out. And now these are all digitized. So basically, there's no variable expense. They are quite literally the global, the, a toll booth on global financial activity, which is going to skyrocket both hedging and speculating in an inflationary environment. Okay, thanks very much, guys. Much more on how to play inflation with ETFs, along with the prospects for a Bitcoin ETF in 2022 with Anna and Jim. Coming up on ETF Edge, they'll be joined by Dave Nautic, CIO and Director of Research of ETF Trends. He'll break down what was behind the SEC's rejection of that Bitcoin ETF. ETFedge.cnbc.com, 1 p.m. Eastern.